Hello, and welcome to another edition of Paranormal Activity and Mysterious Stories. Let me give you a quick preview of what I got coming up. Um, actually, there's a few uh, UFO sightings from YouTube and Reddit. Here's one that was picked up by a CCTV camera. Um, another one. I'm not too sure where this is. Let's see. Um, this one is, is in Mexico, the, the, the descent of an alien. Actually, you know what? This one seems very familiar. It looks like one that I've actually uh, played before, um, but it, it came up again. So, you know, not everyone sees these things. So I'll, I'll show it again. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a YouTube video of a UFO that was supposedly taken from uh, the Atlantis space shuttle. Um, let's see, another, oh, this is a very old footage, you know, not the best quality, uh, but it's of uh, the 1991 solar eclipse when all of these people ha uh, were watching the solar eclipse. And, you know, this is when um, I think the VHS video cameras first came out, which is why this footage is kind of uh, low quality. But, you know, a lot of people were... Um, pointing these new, their new video cameras at the solar eclipse, and a few of them um, caught something in the sky. So, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, it's not the best video, but it just, again, it goes to show, like, you know, these sightings in Mexico aren't unusual. People in Mexico see sightings of UFOs all the time. Um, and, you know, like I said, these, all of these UFOs are not, they're not coming from other planets or galaxies or dimensions or from the future. I believe most of the UFOs that um, we see on a daily basis and, you know, in, in regular places, some, you know, some places you can go where it's not unusual. There are, you know, quote unquote, UFO hotspots. So, you know, like I think similar to where uh, if people want to watch planes take off and land, you know, and apparently there are places you can go and watch UFOs on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, here's a newspaper, or uh, just a, a, excuse me, a website, talking about UFOs spotted in the skies over Southampton. And, you know, basically this article gets into how now, because so many people have cell phone cameras, but, you know, this is one of those locations where people have been sighting UFOs for a very long time. Uh, and uh, here, here's another website talking about UFOs in art history. You know, I mean, some of these paintings go back hundreds of years. So, yeah, you know, these UFOs have been uh, in interacting with humans for, for a very long time. And like I said, it's not because they're visiting. It's because they're our neighbors. And then the last one, you know, this video I was somewhat reluctant to show. I've um, actually... I saw this video a while back, but yeah, I, I, I personally don't believe it, which is why I chose not to show it. Cause I think, yeah, I, I just thought it was a hoax, plain and simple, but I've been wrong before about things like this. You know, there were, there's several things where I just thought, no, that's impossible. That's fo That's a hoax. That's, you know, someone playing a prank. And then later on, I find out through, you know, like either my own research or, you know, reading uh, or, or relying on the research of other people who have credibility that, you know, that I was wrong. So this one, I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm going to show it. You guys can make up your own decision. But apparently this woman here is supposed to be, she, well, I don't know if she's a reptilian, but she definitely has reptilian eyes or at least that's what the video shows. You know, she, she blinks like a regular person, but then her her irises also blink like a lizard. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's CGI or some video editing, but you know, uh, we'll put the link, we'll look at, we'll look at it. Uh, people can make up their own lines. So anyways, uh, let's go to this first video here. Pintor, são duas, duas naves não identificadas. O que que acontece? Olha lá elas surgindo. O que que acontece?
acontece? Tinha que ter pela escuridão já. Look, I don't, I don't think we need to hear this, guys, because I don't think there's too many of my audience understands Portuguese. Yeah, this is in Rio. Yeah, you know, this, I don't, this thing is moving so slow. I mean, couldn't it be a plane coming in for a landing? I'm going to just jump ahead real quick to see, you know, if this thing does any, I like to see a UFO maneuver to, in order to really determine whether, you know, or at least, yeah, to try and figure out if, if this is a UFO or if this is just something that can be explained. Okay, those lights splitting up like that, that's, I'd say that's a kind of a UFO maneuver. But uh, I'll leave a link if you can check that out. Okay, now this next one is of a of this strange cloud this guy caught. Now let me see. I'm gonna. Uh, I guess I want you to hear the audio too. Yeah, you see this thing now. Watch this thing. It's going to start maneuvering. It's all you know. That's yeah. That's the only way I could describe it. Is it? It starts to maneuver. It's a fucking cloud with lights in it, moving weird. I've never seen no shit like that. Yeah, this is, uh, like the guy says, it's definitely moving weird. It kind of looks like a giant bag or, or a bag filled something. Look at that thing. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something that's being cloaked. He says, yeah, and the guy says, there's, you know, there's lights inside of it. That's all I want to play. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. Let's see now, you know, this one, like I said before, I've definitely, I'm pretty sure I've, I've uh, I did a video on this one before. But this guy sees a strange light. Let me just jump ahead here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh, let me go, excuse me, go back a little. Oh, here we go. Are there two lights? No, just one. This guy's having trouble focusing. It looks like this camera is focusing on this uh, wire. There we go. Yeah, I've done this video before. This thing just comes down the hill and then goes back up the hill. It takes forever. This is a 10 minute video. Let me just jump. Let me just jump ahead. So, you, you know, let's see. It slowly works its way back up the hill. Here you can definitely, oh, hang on, what's this noise? Yeah, you can definitely see that this thing, it seems to be under control, you know, as opposed to um, like a balloon, a balloon just, you know, drifting with the wind. Let me see, let me jump ahead a little more. You can really see it when it when it gets into the air. Here we go. Yeah, now you know if this thing were just like a balloon, there's no way it would uh, maintain this much control, so to say. That yeah, it doesn't seem like it's just drifting in the wind. It definitely looks like it's uh, 
it's moving under control. But anyways, that's that for that video. I got a lot to show here. Uh, let's see. Now this video here, you know, this is just a photo of it. But uh, let's get to the right here we go. And again, you know, this this was taken so long ago that uh, that it's not the best quality footage. But I believe this was taken uh, from the Atlantis. Yeah, that's all it says here. It's just a Atlantis. It doesn't really provide much information. But you know what's interesting is you can kind of see there's a distortion around that craft. I wonder if that has something to do with uh, the anti-gravity. Okay, let's see. Okay, now yeah, here's again, this is a, you know, super old video footage, but uh, like I said, this was a, a 1991 Mexico solar event and um, you know, people, thousands of people with their new VHS cameras decided to uh, to photo or to videotape and photograph the eclipse. Yeah, you know, this audio is horrible too, so let me just turn down the audio because it's it's so hard to hear. Yeah, but this is uh, you know, a few people. Let me go back to that here. There it is. Yeah, a few people um, caught this in the air. And um, let's see, here, here they, they talk about how here, this is a, I think a news, news group or something, newscaster, where, you know, I mean, everyone has timestamps, there's, there's these timestamps. So they were able to determine that uh, whatever this thing was, there it is, whatever this thing was, you know, it just, it just hung up there for at least 20 minutes. And and here, yeah, another thing, this happened during a solar eclipse, and this is not the first time that people have reported seeing, you know, strange objects in the sky during a solar eclipse or during some other uh, celestial event. And we, yeah, the, these celestial events are only uh, relevant to this planet. Right? Because, yeah, because, I mean, it, yeah, d d d all the, the alignments depend on where our planet lines up with, you know, some other object. So it, I find it hard to believe that any species, like, again, you know, we know that these things are here. They, they've, they've been recorded during celestial events. So I hardly doubt that any craft or any species decides that, you know, we need to go to planet Earth during some particular celestial event. You know, I think, I think these celestial events are only, or only relate to, to this planet. So I think, you know, if, I mean, if, even if they were watching us, if, if the fact that we are congregating and that's what interests them, you know, still it's, they have to be aware of us because, because they're on this planet too. But anyways, let me get to this other video here, or excuse me, this other web, web page. UFO spotted in the skies above Southampton. Sightings in the country aren't a new thing. You see that? But only since the advent of camera phones has it become easy for spotters to get a snap. The following are accounts of sightings, detailed and photographic evidence. The truth is out there. 2007. Someone caught this. You know, I can't make these images any bigger. Uh, here's 2008, 2008, 2015, 2019. But um, yeah, this, you know, here, this Southampton is apparently a UFO hotspot. If you want to see, you know, places. I know some people have said, you know, that they find it hard to believe that there are places on the planet where there are a bunch of UFO sightings. Well, yeah, they are. I've even done a video of the, like the top 10 UFO hotspots on the planet. So they're out there. And, um, you know, UFOs, 
have played a role in the lives of us for a very long time. Here's another web page, you know, that talks about UFOs and art history. If with the same eyes we looked at the ancient Akkadian Sumerian text, the Bible, the Vedas, the apocryphal gospels, we also looked at recent paintings of a few centuries ago. What could come out? Did the painters want to represent unknown flying objects that even in those epochs crossed the skies of the entire planet? Or did they want to represent anything else? And look at this. This is in a painting of the Church of San Domenico in Gubbio, the 16th century. The crucifixion painted in the first decades of the 14th century. The Annunciation by Carlo Crivelli, a ray that descends from the sky and hits the Madonna, would start from an unidentified flying object of discoid shape that is found in the clouds. Yeah, look at here, ancient, here, these, these are definitely UFOs. So, you know, I will leave a link to uh, this website. You can check it out. And now the last one here, like I said, I've, um, I saw this video before and it's supposedly of a reptilian. Now, I personally do not believe in the idea that there are reptilians on this planet. You know, I mean, not with, at least not within our society, you know, like <clears throat> a lot of people want to say like the, um, the King and Queen of England, you know, are reptilian. But to me, the idea that people are reptilian, I think it's more as a metaphor for people who are cold blooded. You know, I think, I think when, when you're in a position where you have to make decisions that have a negative impact on thousands, if not millions of people. You know, and, and yeah, and you know that the decisions you make are going to kill people and harm people, and, you know, make people suffer. I think in a sense, you know, you have to be somewhat cold blooded. You know, you have to, you, you have to not have any humanity to be able to, to do, make, the, I, well, I guess you can make those decisions and be, uh, uh, or f yeah, just feel conflicted. You know, you might be uh, conflicted and some of those dishes and then you know i guess you wouldn't be a reptilian or cold-blooded i guess it's just you know you just understand that those are the decisions that you have to make and it does impact you negatively but then there are some people you know like i would say like serial killers or or people you know soldiers who enjoy killing i'd say you know they they're cold-blooded but anyways let me just here let's just watch this woman here because like i said i i don't believe it but I've been wrong before, so let's take a look at this. Yeah, you know, this is, in the beginning, she just goes into them, I guess they're talking about, I don't I don't understand the language they're speaking, but then here she makes this stupid grin, and then she does the, watch her, watch her pupils. See there? Did it again. Come on, lady, let's do it one more time. See, I don't know. I mean, is that is that CGI or is that real? Look at I mean, yeah, because she just goes so dramatic. You know what I mean? It it's like it's like she's an actress or something. I'm ready for my close up. I don't know. Um, I've been wrong before. I mean, it. You know, you know. I definitely believe like people who are Rh negative are a different breed of humans. I think they're definitely. Yeah, I think they definitely came from another planet, and she has the features of like Rh negative person. So you know, maybe I don't know. But anyways, I'll leave a link. Uh, that'll be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, please share this video. And if you're new, subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.